to judge. Let the one who poured oil on this priest deal with his priest. Am I speaking to anyone? Can I tell you the truth? When I read that scripture, I said, never again will I sit in a meeting and discuss the errors of pastors. Never. Because I will stop ministering to the Lord and I will become a judge of men I never anointed. And I said, what I would rather do is not speak about them. I will pray for them because maybe they need someone who can intervene for the masses of God to be ministered. What will benefit me if God judges a man that could be restored? You know, Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Ken, they, 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 they were somewhere and some men fought them to a point they were kicked out of church. And the battle was intense. They were even cancelled. They couldn't preach in some ministries. Guess what? Pastor Jimmy went to a school, preached. And when he preached, the daughter of that man got filled with the Holy Ghost. And the daughter went home and said, how Pastor Jimmy blessed her and she's now speaking in tongues. And the man called him and said, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know I was fighting the salvation of my child. Am I speaking to anyone? Today we might celebrate, oh, that ministry is going down. Like I've seen in the Kikuyu world, a ministry trending. Guess what? I'm praying for that church. I'm praying for that church. I'm praying for mercy. I'm saying, Lord, no. Let this door not be open. If thy servant speaks and bless people, I don't know. Maybe one day my daughter will get born again there. The restoration of that man could be the restoration of my life. Maybe my mother will get healed by the ministry of that person. So why should we take out the workers? Kaya. So the Bible says, and the man ministered unto the Lord. Those who are serving, ushering, praise and worship, never stop serving because of a man. Let your service be unto the Lord. No matter the misfits around you, just get the mic and say it is okay. There is a lot of politics, but I came to minister unto the Lord. It doesn't matter who says what. I will pray for them I see bringing trouble. I will stand as the mature one and become the intercessor. I refuse to point a finger. Let me not help God in judgment. Let me cry for mercy to be deployed. Am I speaking? And you know those stories, especially in the age of social media. You might be in one hour looking at a man being analyzed. The dark secrets of Bishop so and so. Things you have never known about his life. Like I've realized now in America, when, when now some of the fathers are reaching 65 years, and age they can't defend them, social media begins to rise. And many of the fathers are dying without honor. But when you look at their track record, the labors they have put, nobody wants to see. A man has labored for 50 years, yet you pick a one salmon and criticize his labors. May the Lord have mercy. I say may the Lord have mercy. And you know what I discovered? When you begin to sow such seeds, one day you will reap them. One day you will be the man in need of mercy. And someone will say, I don't know why. Let me just pray for that girl. What has happened is not okay, but I choose to pray. I choose to pray. Have you realized the many videos that have been trending of the president of America Biden are videos where he's either falling or where he misses something. It looks like men pay attention in your failure than in your success. And it looks like there's such an agitation for men to come down and not to enter where they are going. We choose to be different. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, serve the Lord. Tell your neighbor, even if Saul is a misfit, you concentrate with the one who anointed you. Oh my God. So we are just laying the, the, the introduction of the school. Tell your neighbor today's introduction of the school. I'm trying to show you the leader of that school. And after David killed Goliath, guess what? Saul launches 
on a perpetual assignment to kill David. Not because he has done anything. Until David asked Jonathan, what have I done to your father that I may repent? What he did know, he was not dealing with Saul the man. There was an evil spirit that set the man against the assignment of David. Let me come to your level. Jesus meets Peter. And he says, I'm supposed to go to the cross and die. And Peter stands and says, no, you can't die when we are here. We are boys for life. Where you go, I'll go. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, you know what? Before the end of tonight, you will deny me three times. He says, Jesus, it's as if you don't understand. Boys for life. Ah, I am not like Judas. I've been there. I'm in the inner team. For me, you can count on me. And, and, and he attempted. When Judas betrayed him with a kiss, he attempted. Because he cut one of the soldiers' ears. And I want to believe Peter, after doing that, he must have sought the attention of Jesus to tell him, oh yeah, boys for life. <laughs> and Jesus said, you know, you don't fight this battle like this. This one is not in the realm of mortals. We are now contending with powers. But this is the only way of victory. So when they stepped in the house of Caiaphas, or in the place of the high priest, where they were, and Peter was there, and he looked at Jesus, and he saw how defeated Jesus looked like. Let me tell you, Jesus, I mean, Peter had so much faith in Jesus. He knew, I have seen this man speak to the wind. I have seen this man open the eyes of the blind. Who is Caiaphas and his team? This one can call fire. What are you saying crucifying him? I want also to believe possibly Judas knew this is a road deal. Mimi ku seti yesu, nia mjue ni nafanya. Um senta mseti, lakini hakuna kitu mleza du. Najua ni nani ni naseti. Ini kuunda do raisi. And maybe that's why he regretted. Sema mazezi kwa najua itayesha hivi. Ay, azulubiwe. Mili kwa najua doa na sema angels, oya. Attack. Na kiumane. I was like, no, no. This is not what we expected. So he's seeing Jesus being harassed. And you know what the Bible says? A damsel. A Sunday school girl came. I said, eh, we, we. Unaka kama Peter. Said, we, we, we. Change supplier. Hallelujah. Another one came three times. And I love how that movie goes. Because you always see Jesus standing and looking. As the cock crows. Then you see Peter looking at Jesus. And he's like, you told me. This battle shifted. And do you know what the Bible says? Immediately Jesus overcame the devil in the wilderness. After he overcame the devil. This is what Jesus, this is what the devil said when he left. The Bible says, and the devil left waiting for another opportune time. The next time, the devil never came as Lucifer. He came as Peter. Because the language of, if you are the son of God, was a conversation to make sure you don't go to the cross. Because the devil understood what will happen if the blood is shed. His kingdom is over. So he, that's why he said, if you worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms. Let's deliver the kingdom by worship, not by the cross. So the other opportune time, the devil never came as the devil. He came as Peter. Many people have won the devil as the devil. But in the opportune time, they have seen Saul, but not the evil spirit behind Saul. Some battles is not your grand, grandmother. It's not your mother-in-law who has a problem. There is an evil spirit. So you think by hating her, you are solving. In fact, that has even extended the battle. The only way to do is love and pray for her. Because you now know better that I am not dealing with a woman. I am dealing with a force. It has hidden. That's why Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, get behind me, Satan. So he said, the man has no problem. But I know this voice. I met it in the wilderness. It is the same voice. And that voice followed him up to the cross. When they are still on the cross, the devil comes as one of the thieves. If you are the son of God, <laughs> save yourself. And he just looks at him and says, it's too late. 
because the Bible says on that cross he publicly disarmed the devil on that cross it was not a place of death it was a place of transaction from death to life so David knew as a man he was offended but he had to draw the boundaries of his offense he came so close to Saul but he still there is even a time he told his warriors don't touch him yet yet the, the warriors of Saul were asleep he had the opportunity to kill him he decided to cut a rod and he lifted it up and said this is how close I was to killing you but I have no authority to touch the anointed let the Lord judge you now these perpetual attacks made David to run anointed but fleeing my goodness I love this scripture you, you have been ordained by a prophet whose words never fell to the ground without coming to pass. So the man that has anointed you, he's not a prophet you can negotiate about his prophecy. His words are captured and everything comes to pass. He's the one who has said you are the king. Now the oil is upon you, but you're a refugee. Running away and it was so bad. Let me show you. It was.